All right, y'all people, we are back at the lab, and um, I'm glad that you guys have finally made it here. Uh, I hope you get the opportunity to print out your handout um, that goes along with this video. This episode is basically all about hair. Everything that you really wanted to know, if you even if you've taken the cosmetology classes, you didn't get a chance to offer, uh, actually go into the chemistry of the hair. You wanted to know how to make the hair grow longer, what were the uh, actual minerals and the actual chemical composition of this hair so you can really understand the deeper sciences of this little protein that comes out of our skin follicles. Now the medical term for pore everyone uses is what we would say follicle. Now what is hair really made of? Hair is made of 91% of protein. A protein that is long chains of amino acids of glycine, alanine, and cysteine. And these amino acids are coiled together and as a key component of it would be called keratin. Keratin is basically made up of all of these different polypeptide chains and we're going to go over what peptide means and basically I'll stop right now so you can understand like look at the, the handout so that you will know what polypeptide chain is and a peptide bond or a chain you can start calling that glue you know this is the things that make everything stick together now this peptide bond is basically uh, a chemical bond between two different molecules and uh, an amino group now, anything with the amino group is a living cell it is basically a, a carbon a oxygen uh, something uh, a living cell has to have amino groups uh, and a carboxyl group um, so we're going to go over the chemical composition of this thing and I, the way that we can remember it is to always say cones we can look at this molly mod structure that I built for you guys to see that it is carbon which is 51% of this hair structure this is the lowest structure for hair. It is carbon, oxygen, oxygen is represented by the red, uh, hydrogen represented by the white, and that is around about 6%, and the nitrogen represented by the blue, and the sulfur is the green that we see. Inside of this hair, we got three different layer, layers. We got the medulla, the, the inner part is called the cortex, and then we have the outer shell which is called the cuticle. Now I'm going to go inside this structure that I drew behind me so that you can really see how the hair shaft comes out of the skin and how the hair root, the root of the hair is underneath the skin. Now as we see now this tube like structure, this pocket inside of our skin that we call pore or follicle deep into our hypodermis. The hypodermis is that fatty layer of skin underneath our skin. And we have three layers of skin, the hypodermis, the dermis, and the epidermis. But see, as you can tell, at the bottom end of this hair shaft, there is a bulb. Now understand this. When we pull out a strand of our hair, you see a little white ending of that hair, and that is called the hair bulb. That is called the hair bulb. We went over the follicle and we see all the things that's around it. And we, we said that that was the two block pocket. But the hair bulb is surrounded by a area where it can get all of its nutrients from. So how does this hair get its nutrients? It gets it from our bloodstream. Our bloodstream is found in our hypodermis area and it is called the papilla. The derma papilla is the area of the hair where hair starts its growth cycle. It can get um, it can get damaged. It can get damaged easily by certain hormones that come across our blood, uh, our, our, our um, hypodermis area. Now, this is where um, there was those minerals we was just talking about, the, the carbon, the oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur gets all of this is, is food for the growth of that hair. Um, we will go over the growth cycles and just in, in a few in a few minutes we'll go over the growth cycles. 
Next to the follicle, we have another muscle that is involuntary. It's a very tiny muscle, but one of the tiniest muscles of our body. And that muscle is called the erectile pili. Pili basically means um, hair, uh, one follicle of hair, um, one strand of hair. And pilus would mean multiple strands of hair. So that's just Latin for hair. So this erectile pili muscle is involuntary because it happens only with strong emotions or some type of scare, like a, a, somebody get cold, a ghost wind pass by, you get scared or you get cold or you get frightened. You can take, for instance, the cat that gets cornered by a dog and it's frightened. So all of a sudden the hair pops up and that is the erectile pili muscle. Very unique muscle. So next to the erectile pili muscle, we have the sebaceous gland. The sebaceous gland is the gland that secretes this oily substance called uh, sebum. Sebum is what moisturizes our skin. We can uh, see that the hair actually gets lubricated when it comes out. This is all the sebum area right here that lubricates this hair follicle that gives it its lustrous, silkiness, smoothness that it has. Now, if we roll on the, the, the surface of the hair strand, we can see in the direction that it is growing that it's smooth. But if we go backwards, you feel it rough. Now we need to understand that the roughness is the scales. These little scales down here is called the cuticle, the cuticle area. And in this cuticle, <clears throat> they're like the roof on top of a house. They bunched on top of each other to give it its protection. Now sometimes this cuticle can get damaged. The cuticle gets damaged by certain pH levels or certain pH of, of products that may damage the hair or certain chemicals like chlorine in the water that damages the hair. Now the hair pH is around 4.5 to ranging between 4.5 and 5.5. Now anything that is too acidic <clears throat> will, will basically burn off the scales of that hair strand and expose the inner layers, which is the cortex. Now anything that is too alkaline, as we know that some hair care businesses and salons that use perms and relaxers and things like that, they have to use an alkaline solution in order for their hair to be manipulated and to, be, to move as they need it to style and things that way. Now, um, Chlorine is another element that may expose the inner layers of the cortex. Now what is the cortex? The cortex is where all of these different bonds are happening in that. Now we have a hydrogen bond, we have a salt bond, we have a disulfide bond. And this is the glue that sticks everything together. So if you expose these areas, then just like hydrogen, if you expose it to water, the hydrogen bond, if you expose that to water, then some of the hydrogen bonds falls off. Now, there are millions of polypeptide chains inside of this one little strand. We just, we see the outside layer, but we don't get a chance to go deep and deep inside of this hair. Now, inside of this strand, just like I just said, we got all of these different things. Now, we're deep into the sciences of it, and I hope you're still following along, we can really understand these different bonds and how this thing actually sticks and stays for at least six years and then it falls off. Then it falls off. And if you really want to know the question of how does a Rasta man or how does a, a Rasta woman get their hair past their knees and things like that, then I'm breaking down the science so that you can understand how these bonds interact with each other. Now let's go deep inside of these bonds and understand how when you wash your hair or when you 
give it heat to your hair. You put a curling iron on your hair, a, a flat iron on your hair, how it breaks off hydrogen bonds. Uh, <clears throat> the hydrogen bonds are kind of weak. They're very, very weak. And it counts for it accounts for about one third of the overall strength of that hair. Now that just that's just the first layer of the um, the cuticle. Each each different layer has about three layers until you get to what we call the medulla. Now we're gonna get there. But inside of the salt bun, the salt bun is next. This is where um, basically the polypeptide chains are easily broken by alkaline solutions or either by um, uh, acid solutions. This is where the pH actually changes and for further manipulation of their hair. These are not as weak as the hydrogen bonds, but they are weak because they can be changed by chemicals. Um, then we got the dose disulfide bond. Dose disulfide bond is, is it's not so much of the disulfide bond because they're, they're the strongest unit of the, the, the actual hair strand. But it's usually at the end root area of that hair strand because this is where you get your thickness at, this is where you get your, 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 your color, your dullness, or your thinness at. You can really give cysteine the, the credit here when it comes to our disulfide bun because cysteine is made from sulfur. And it has to be chemically induced and it's not so easily broken by heat or water. So this is where all of the the, the the magic can happen if you really want to just change the the naturalness of your hair in a disulfide bond area of your 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 hair strand. Now the medulla, you can't change that part. The medulla cannot be changed. Um, put it like this: blonde people, or blonde hair people, or, or very fine hair people do not have a medulla. Everyone that has a beard has coarse hair. Um, you have locks, you have coarse hair. Um, you learn something about your ethnicity right here because black hair people have a medulla because this is where the hair strand gets its color from. And it has melanocytes inside of that hair. Overstand the medulla is only for darker people, coarse hair people, people. It's not for the blind person. So we learn a little bit about the physiology, our biology, and, and how that works together on there. So I went deeper inside of our hair. Now we get to learn what's going on in all of these different bonds, all of these different coil rings of uh, strands inside of our hair. How does this, how, how is this really put together? How can it grow as a protein? How do these things actually put together? Let's, let's go farther inside. So inside this cuticle, inside of the layers of the, uh, the cortex, we have these chains of bonds and they, they, they call microfills. These microfills are stitched together by other microfills. You, you start to look at it like this. Let's see. From this macrofill, we go to a microfill. And then to the microfill, they are stitched together and form what we call protofill. Protofills unloosen up even more, they get even looser. Um, you get to that point where these are made just by helixes and even inside of the helix this is how your protein structures are actually built up inside of our skin inside of our hair this is just not our hair this is our fingernails this is our toenails this is how a helix is turns into strands of what they call dimers I didn't even go that far into the dimers because those little things are so small. This is what makes the choline carotene molecules into other B, B, A helixes, B helixes, protofibrils, microfibrils, 
macrofibrils, and then all into wrapped in together into this matrix of proteins together. And that is called and wrapped around into a cuticle. The hair structure is very unique. Protein structures are very unique. Our skin, our collagen, and everything that is keratinocytes and everything else, this is what goes on when it comes to our hair. Even with our nails, we're gonna do further more videos even with our nails, but right now, I'm about to erase this board so we can go into the growth cycles. I want you to know about how dandruff and bacteria, fungi, and all those things damage our, our, our actual follicles and, and, and our hair, it thins out our hair. Why are we having so much thinning hair? Those who are balding, our men that are balding, how can you grow your hair back? Let's go into the disulfide buns and let's, 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 let's learn how the growth cycle really works.